Now let's look into the fire straw part as well. So we have these forms. So when we create an activity, let's just go into the, this form. So we have these links, uh, these routes, like uh, behavior, it's the URL, activity, 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 goals. So we have this list, also we'll look into this later. But when you go to new activity, there's this form. And when we fill this in, press this button, a new activity is created. So basically we have this route, it's behavior, activity. So it's similar to what you see in the URL. So we can also work with wildcards or placeholders. Params, par parameters. So here in this route, we just use this component from, from the lib folder. Try to keep this as uh, short as we can and then do all the logic in the lib. And sometimes you have to load things or uh, do some things here as well. If it's only uh, special things you want to have for this route and you want to have components, reuse components. So they can become bigger, but in general, I try to make them, uh, you, can, you can first put all the code in here, you can put it here and it works as well, but it's better I think to use these components so we can reuse them later. So with create activity component, what we do is we load this uh, Firebase store and we load it similarly as the authentication. So there's a function for it and it will get the app based on the config. Um, it will return the Fire store and then it will set the emulator. And if you don't use this, then you will be going to production or acceptance, whatever your domain is here and your project ID. So you have to be a bit careful to, to not uh, work with production data when you use Firestore. So we have this Firestore DB, it's like, and then when we get this data from the form, then we can say add doc, we have this add doc and based on this collection. So these collections are the same as what you see here in the root. I think how it works like a, I'm not completely sure what how, how it works, but collection can have a document and the document can have a sub collection, etc. etc. Currently, I use it like um, with these maps or arrays. Keep it simple, but yeah, we have to look into this if we have to change this later. So it will get data from the form, and then we'll get this collection and then we'll add uh, data to the collection. And Firestore is a NoSQL database, so there's no schema. If we make a typo somewhere, then it be also with this typo in the in the database. And if we add stuff later, we can just add stuff here and add data, and it will be stored. Um, so there's no schema. That's good to know. And there's like a whole uh, no SQL issues you will get with this, but it's also very flexible. So the best way to to handle this is to be a bit defensive when you output it. I think so. If we like add a new feature here, then we cannot guarantee these either have to refactor all the old data in the in the collections or we have to make like uh if if the feature is enabled for this data then we show the feature and else we don't show it but we probably only run into these issues when we're on production and we have the users then we have to be very careful about this but during development we can just assume uh, ignore this and uh, make sure everything works and when we add production data in there, then we will have these problems. Yeah, so that's how you uh, add um, things to Firestore. And when you edit things, uh, let's first go to the route, there's this ID, and then index is it will show the doc, and wijzigen is it will edit the doc. So you can get the document like this, with a Firestore instance again, and then we say, hey, give me the reference of this ID. Params ID. This is the ID you see here, and it's the same as you go to edit, then it's this ID, and that's the same as the ID we see here. That's how it connects. So for the edit, we have this reference. I'll just put again the doc with the doc function, you get a reference. And with this reference, you can get a snapshot, and if the snapshot exists, you can get the data. And you have to use this reference again to update it. So that's why we put it in here. And with the update doc, you can update this reference with new data. That's why we can edit things. Um, okay, let's continue with. So we use functions and those are pretty awesome, I think, because with the function, you get like an event driven architecture system. We're not going into the SSR at the moment, how SwellKit is deployed. So it's quite complicated and we will work on this later because there are some bugs. So with these functions, you can listen to things. So here uh, we listen to when a goal is created or a activity is created, then we will do something. And how these functions work, they will 
run every function will run on its own instance so it looks like one big file but they're actually like a lot of machines all over the place and uh, every export function will be on a different machine and this is very handy we actually use this already so if a document is created every time it will run this function and it has this data from the basically the snapshot again this has an id the object id we call it here maybe we should just call it id i don't know maybe, but it's fine i think i copy paste this from somewhere maybe we should make it id mm. then we can do something with this yeah, we can do anything with this we can make some calculations we can convert it we can upload it to somewhere else we can send an email you name it so it's very flexible things you can do here and when you create an activity you don't have to worry about it you don't have to say like i also do something with this data now we just do the add doc and then it will trigger all these function somewhere else um so it's very event driven um in these functions we can say like oh we created an uh, activity so we'll also create an activity history in the functions and this will trigger again some other functions so it it all triggered all over the place and a lot of functions will be running and but the user will not experience this as well as it will be very fast because we just create an object and so these event driven functions are i think a big benefit of using uh google firebase instead of uh, something else because in general it's very difficult to do this without having a good infrastructure in place uh, you can use google cloud functions i think on the background they, they use this as well but yeah firebase makes it easy to, to create this so in this case we have an uh, index a search index because we use uh, algolio Algolia. So algolia search and it's basically a paid alternative to search solar and other open source uh, initiatives it's basically a SaaS product for search oh it is uh, not free ish yet it's free ish for the first records first units but uh, when we created something in firestore we want to also create a search index uh, for it and this is useful because we want to search probably search things and change it a uh, good search function is uh, is very uh, important for a website so uh, you can do queries with fire uh, store but uh, yeah in general if you want to query something it's better to use a search and there's a lot of search things you can do with it like facets filtering pagination um, stop words so this uh you get all the search features that we want maybe in the future and we don't have to then work with Firestore and maybe even for pricing it will save some money. I don't know exactly if it will, but well, it's very nice to have a search uh, solution connected to it. So there's, I think last week there was a Algolio search integration added to Firebase as well. So they have these extensions and then they have like a lot of, uh, yeah, this is it. But before I saw this, then also already created my own solution for it and i think it's good to it's actually quite easy to create yourself so we have this algodio search library and then we can get this uh, client we have this admin key that we store in the configuration uh probably i exposed this somewhere else so i have to regenerate this key uh, after i'm done with this stream it's fine for now yeah it's one thing with web development you have these private keys all over the place and then it's difficult not to expose them but i actually had this ad yesterday i uh we have this script to add a user at claim i thought this was a, this was a key as well so i cannot explain this script but actually this is the user id so uh, after you do firebase login you will have this key stored somewhere i don't even know don't even want to know where expose it but this if you want to use like if you want to create these claims you can create them easily on the emulator page but it's quite difficult to do it on the production side there's no interface for it i think they are working on this i don't know actually if you go to the this authentication you will see the users but you cannot edit it you can just disable delete or reset the password you cannot add the claims here so you have to make something for this yourself and i just created a script which i can then run uh, with npm and then it will create this uh, moderator uh, tag for this user. Or maybe in the future we need like a different uh, administrator website or something to, to make this flexible. But for now this works. So uh, we can have like an administrator claim on the 
acceptance environment. And if we just use like these credentials for it, yeah, it make an admin key, not show not contents of this file. And then we can just do node and then it will run uh, correctly. But I do need to change the Algolio uh, key. Okay, um, I will do that. So in the functions, uh, so here we can just say uh, with the index, do some Algolia logic and get the client and then we can use the index and put data in there. So if we now create an activity, test the Algolia index and create it, hey, triggered. Then it first is in the Firestore. Yeah, it's here with this ID and then it should also be in the correct activity index. And it's here as well. And then if we go back to the overview page, now it uses this index to retrieve the results. And if we search with this search form, then it will actually use Algolia to search. So you get like a really nice search uh, engine. And we have the same for the Leerdoelen. Um, and on the activity, you can add a Leerdoelen to the activity. You can connect the goals with the activity. And you can also autocomplete them. And this is also Algolia search, autocomplete. They have nice libraries for this and I didn't really do too much with it. And then you have, when you save it, it, it will also save these things to the index and um, to the Firestore. So now it has like this goal information here. Normally in uh, SQL land, you wouldn't do this. You would just say, hey, it's a foreign key. But because we're working with no SQL, we want to do this. We don't want to have the description here, but we probably do want to have this uh, title and then we can say, hey, you're now working on this activity with this goal and you don't have to do a lot of queries. Uh, we're basically just uh, supposed to, now you can also probably search on, uh, just test it out. So if you're in activity, we probably could say, yeah, change title. Yeah, so there's no title change in uh, in the activity, but still in the Leerdoelen. So we can even search for the Leerdoelen here and get all the activities that are connected to it. Benefit as well. Maybe it's not a benefit, but you can also configure this to only search on the title or the description. You can do this. So that's the project we have. We have uh, we have Firestore, we have Firebase authentication, and we have Algolia search. Um, and now we will continue with uh, creating new things.